In this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the banjo ukulele, okay? This is Banjo Ukulele 101, so if you're a beginner, if you're new to this uh, instrument, uh, this video is for you. So hopefully I can, uh, I can pass along some of my knowledge, because whenever I first got a banjo ukulele, I was a little confused about a few of the things about it, so hopefully this will help you a little bit. Um, number one, uh, first and foremost, you know, you probably, my guess is you probably picked up this instrument because you were, you are a ukulele player, okay? So you were thinking, okay, I can translate this to this other instrument with a, you know, kind of that unique banjo sound. Uh, that's exactly why I picked it up. I don't really, um, I don't think I've ever met anyone that's, that's uh, been like, that's not really been a musician that's been like, I'm just going to start playing and I pick banjo ukulele as my first. I don't, I don't know anyone that's done that. Usually it's a, uh, transitional <laughs> instrument from a ukulele. Uh, so that's the case. Uh, first and foremost, let's talk about the parts. The parts on on a banjo ukulele. Obviously, each of them is going to be a little bit different, uh, but for the most part, the same uh, fundamental parts make up a banjo ukulele. This is actually, uh, I bought this a few years back off of eBay. It needed some work at the time, so um, I've done some work on it. Actually, I tried to do some work on it, would be a better uh, statement, and then my friend Daniel who uh, runs a YouTube channel called Circuits and Strings, which uh, if you want to check his channel out, it's really cool. He does a lot of really neat stuff. Uh, he makes a lot of instruments himself, uh, does a lot of repairs, a lot of reviews as well, but link in the description below for Circuits and Strings. I sent this out to him because he is more of a luthier than I am, and uh, he put on a new uh, new head for it. Uh, he also put on new tuners, and uh, he put on a new uh, bridge as well and did some work on the... Um, on the, uh, the the pot down here. This is what's called, this whole circle thing is called the pot. Okay, so thank you, Daniel, for doing this awesome work because it sounds fantastic. But the parts, again, for the most part, it's the same principles as ukulele. It's a very similar scale to a ukulele. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this actually might be a soprano ukulele scale uh, or possibly a little bit smaller. I'd have to, I guess, think back and check my math on that. But anyway, it's right around that. Uh, four strings, of course. Uh, tuned uh, just like a ukulele. Um, as far as I have my little lip, my little sheet over here. This is what I'm going off of today. Uh, as far as uh, the strings go, people uh, people have wondered: Are they the same strings that you would use on a ukulele? Yes, the same strings you would use on a ukulele. You'll use on a banjo ukulele. Do not use steel strings on a banjo ukulele or any ukulele for that matter. Do not do that. That's a bad idea. But nylon strings or uh, or Nile, uh, what is that called, like Nile Gut, that stuff that Aquila makes, anyway, uh, that's what you want to use on here, same ukulele, or st strings you use for ukulele, you want to put on this sucker right here. Um, the other parts are the different parts, I, I suppose, again, we talked about the pot a little bit, so the idea with this is all, by the way, this all would, would uh, come disassembled fairly easily, um, but the neck has this, uh, this uh, bar right here that runs all the way through, and then bolts on, of course, by the way of these little J-bolt things, right? And then on the top you have a skin, a skin head, uh, either a calf skin or a goat skin. I believe for banjo ukuleles, you want to use calf skin. I believe that's correct. I feel like at one time I tried to change the skin on myself and I put a goat skin on. And while I was able to get it on successfully, it was a little too thick. Um, and so I, I had trouble with that. So if you ever want to change the head, I believe uh, vellum or a cap, a cap skin is what you want to use, okay, for the head of it. But essentially what you have here is a ukulele neck on a drum, on a hand drum. As a matter of fact, um, I'm going to put a little, a little uh, card up here. You can check this video out. But I actually made a banjo ukulele years ago, and you can see me playing it. Um, but I actually just used a Remo hand drum and got a ukulele neck and just essentially bolted the two together with some variations and uh, and made a banjo ukulele. So if you ever wanted to get you know experimental and make your own, it's actually pretty easy to do. Uh, but again, this is basically a hand drum is what, what this is. So a lot of very similar uh, uh, principles, we're gonna talk about that here in a little bit, um, to, a, to a drum or to a drum head uh, have to do with this, uh, with this calfskin head right here. Um, the other part I wanted to talk about here is the bridge. Okay, so the bridge, obviously, if you're not familiar, the bridge is this little guy down here that the strings uh, rest on. This is the bridge. Uh, obviously, up here is the nut. Okay, that's what those two parts are called. This bridge is going to be different uh, than 
uh, than a ukulele if you have one because this is actually a floating bridge. Okay, and what that means is that this bridge actually moves. And so one of the first things that I wish I would have known uh, regarding a banjo ukulele is intonation, something to do with intonation, which really has to do with this bridge right here. So the idea with intonation on a ukulele or really any fretted instrument, I suppose any, any uh, instrument in, in general, but the idea is that uh, for, for a stringed instrument like this, is that the scale, in other words, from the nut to the bridge, uh, you have your certain scale that your frets kind of take up. So somebody's actually done the math and planned out where all these little frets go, right? They've done this comprehensive math so that you play the right notes whenever you work on the frets up there. But the distance between the, uh, the bridge to the 12th fret and the 12th fret to the nut needs to be exactly uh, equidistant, okay? So it has to be the exact same length from bridge to the 12th fret as it is from the nut to the 12th fret, specifically where... Uh, where the strings uh, first make their point of contact between the nut and then right there on the bar of the 12th fret and then the bar to where the strings make contact right there on the bridge, okay? That's the, you want these two to be the same as these two. Does that make sense? I hope so. So we're gonna kind of check my, uh, this one should be exactly right. So we're gonna check here with my tape measure and basically from the nut to the 12th fret it's just under six and a half inches. And then from the 12th fret to where the strings touch, first touch down here, it is just under six and a half inches, right? So this one is actually set pretty well, but I'll show you here. Again, this can actually move. So I'll show you here. You can actually move that, that bridge up and down, right? And so you can reset the intonation because what will happen uh, over time, of course, as you play and as things get bumped and moved and whatever, this might actually, um, you know, uh, not not uh, have the same contact point uh, whenever you ha first had your banjo ukulele and your intonation was set up properly. But that's okay. It's really easy to adjust. Obviously, you just shift it back into position. And a really good way to do that, um, unless you really want to be guessing and doing your harmonics and getting a tuner out, and it's, it's going to be a nightmare, okay? So if your ukulele, if your banjo ukulele, is set up with the proper intonation from the get-go. And you can, I'm not gonna walk you through how to do that because plenty of videos um, and instructionals on how to do that online. But uh, a good rule of thumb is to make sure you put, and I'll show you here, little pencil marks. See that right there, right there? Pencil marks, that's where your bridge needs to sit. So whenever it's set up and you're happy with it, make yourself, take a little pencil, make yourself little pencil marks right there. So if it does get out of place, you can just slide it right back to where those pencil marks are and you're back in proper intonation, okay? Very good. So that's what you wanna do. And right now, I'm gonna take a drink of tea because I feel like taking a drink of tea. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, it's good tea. We'll get some audio, some really close proximity audio here. This is like ASMR now. Ah, that's gonna sound gross. Okay, now that we've gotten the tea break over with, let's move on and let's talk about uh, continuing Banjo 101 ukulele. By the way, your, your uh, certificate of completion uh, will be emailed to you right after you watch this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the tuning. As, we, as I mentioned before, um, this is same strings as a ukulele, therefore the, uh, the tuning uh, is going to be similar to a ukulele. So you can, ta you can tune this... Uh, obviously, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Music is open to interpretation, but the two most common ways to tune this is going to be the standard G C E A, G C E A, or the My Dog Has Fleas, just like a normal ukulele. Or if you wanted to, you could tune it up uh, to D. I had to write the standard A. Excuse me, A D F sharp B. Basically, you could tune everything a full step above. And some people, uh, some banjo ukulele players, will do that. That's very popular in what they call the Formby style of playing. Uh, George Formby, you can look up some of his videos, but he was kind of an innovator when it came to the banjo ukulele. And a couple of his techniques, they just kind of sound better whenever you're tuned up a full step because they're punchier techniques, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, but he liked to play with that A, D, F sharp, B tuning. Okay, so that's an option if you want to try that. Or... 
You can just stick with the old fashioned G, C, E, A, and you're gonna be good to go. So the next thing that I wish I would have known about whenever I first got my banjo ukulele and started messing with it was the tone, the general tone of a banjo ukulele. Obviously, it's a very, very different tone uh, than a standard uh, wooden ukulele, right? Yeah, very different, right? Very punchy. Obviously, it sounds like a banjo. That's the whole point of this thing. Um, but whenever I first got this, um, I was really not that happy with the tone of it. And it kind of drove me a little bit crazy because I thought it was, it rang out too much. It was kind of, you know, as you can tell, it's the way it articulates. It's very loud on certain, uh, certain notes and certain chords. And so I actually, uh, I found something online randomly one time where somebody suggested um, to take a sock and put it in the back of the ukulele, okay? So I'm going to show you kind of tonal differences here because it does work out pretty well. So if it's if your banjo uke is too loud or you just want to try to mute some of the frequencies, obviously the idea is that this sock is going to touch the skin back here, right? And it's going to... Um, decrease the volume, it's going to kind of mute some of that, some of that ringing out, because this is going to absorb some of that sound. So I'll kind of show you what it sounds like. Again, let's just do the test again. Okay, that's without anything. Let's jam this sock in there, and it kind of sits in there like that. You can kind of, I kind of tuck it in there, right? So you can tell, it's, it's definitely muted it a little bit. It's taken away some of that ring. Uh, and some of that kind of, what I think is kind of a yucky tone from it, okay? You can even go more intense with this. I have another pair of socks, dress socks. I have two of these. I know, all sorts of socks. But you can actually uh, bundle up more, right? And you can kind of shove it in there, right? A little more pressure is being applied here. And even more so. Okay, so... Some options there for it. Some options there. I think that's a little too much for my personal taste. I'm a one. I'm more of a one sock guy than a bundled sock guy. Like for instance, I only have one sock on right now. As you'll, as you'll see right there. See that? Yep. That's how I roll. So I'm more of a one sock guy. I know. Dad jokes. I'm sorry. I'm a dad. I can't help it. I'll put the, I'll put the sock back on now. So getting back to the tone, put a sock in it. You know, that's a good way to improve the tone. Uh, mute some of the stuff that you don't like, but there's a lot of other ways to do that. I mean, there are um, there there's probably a myriad of ways you could think about it. You could probably make your own tone rings. Tone rings are something that drummers will use that actually go around. They kind of fit around the drum with a circle in the middle, and they make contact with it again. It's to absorb some of that extra ring. Um, there is uh, dr like drum gels, which I've never. Uh, any, I've never tried any of these because the socks always work for me. But if you want to get experimental, you want to try some stuff, go for it. Um, but there's drum gels. There's something called moon gel, which essentially kind of does a similar thing. It's a gel that you put on. I guess you would put it back here and it somehow absorbs some of the sound. There's gaffer tape. It's not duct tape. <laughs> Don't put duct tape on your on your banjo ukulele head. That's a bad idea. I Trust me on that one. But anyway, gaffer tape is, is something that uh, some drummers will use to kind of mute their the sound so really again the principles of, of, of muting or, or adjusting the tone of, the, of a drum head would apply here because essentially what this is is a drum head a small drum head okay so you can mess around with that try it a little bit and kind of see what works for you and if you happen upon any awesome things uh, cloth or felt or tape or gel or whatever you use if you happen to find something that you really really like leave me a comment down there in the comments uh, let me know what, what you're using, and uh, and hey, I'll give it a shot too, you know, because I'm always looking for ways to improve the tone of this. And last, but certainly not least, uh, playing a banjo ukulele. Uh, again, you can play anything on here that you would play on a ukulele, right? It's up to you, right? Don't let anybody limit you on what you can or can't play on a banjo ukulele. Um, obviously, it has this very distinct percussive sound. And I mentioned George Formby earlier. And a couple of his, um, I guess he developed them, is my understanding, a couple of his techniques that he developed specifically for the banjo ukulele 
once you hear him play, I and again, I encourage you to look some of his stuff up. Once you hear him play, you're going to be like, holy crap, I want to do that because it's really cool. Um, but he has two that I actually can do okay-ish. Neither one of them very well, but okay-ish. The first one is a triplet, okay? And a triplet, you, uh, so I'm playing again with my fingers, kind of like that, kind of pinched together almost. I'm really, my index finger, the nail part of my neck, I chew my fingernails, by the way. I know, it's a bad habit, but I do it. Anyway, the index finger uh, is really what I'm strumming with, right? Picking with, if you will, right? And so his technique for triplets is to, is to go, is to separate these two, right? And go, right? So you're gonna go index, thumb, back up with your index. That's a triplet, 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 right? So they're two different strokes. Down, thumb, up. So you're actually, you're kind of, you're kind of flicking your thumb and your index finger. Let's get a little closer. If you're if you're just learning a triplet, I, I'd say start start with a da just downstrokes, just quarter note downstrokes. One two three triplet. One two three triplet. One two three triplet. One two three triplet. Okay, just start with that or any three syllable word that you want to throw in there. One two three chocolate. One two three Africa. One two three coffee tea. One two three. By the way, coffee tea is gross. Uh, check out the card up there. We tried to make coffee tea. It was horrible. Anyway, you get the idea though. You can play triplets that way, but again, start slow. Uh, when you're first learning those, make sure you get the technique down. I tell you what, your muscle memory is a fantastic thing, you know, once you start doing it. And I always tell my daughter, I teach my oldest daughter to play drums. I always tell her, look, you just got to learn the right way to do it very slowly. And then when you go to sleep, your brain is going to actually still keep working. It's going to start putting puzzles together. Your brain will actually kind of teach your muscles what to do the next time and the next time and the next time. So make sure, you, again, I'm an advocate for plenty of sleep when it comes to learning new things with music, okay? I, I, I swear it sounds hocus pocus, but it really does make a difference. But anyway, just practice it slow and pretty soon you can go... You can do something like that. Okay. The other technique that George Formby relies upon is called a split stroke. Okay, and a split stroke is essentially is essentially that, right? And so the idea is that, again, I'm using my index finger, the nail on my index finger to do this, is that you're gonna go, you're gonna go down, up, down, down, up, down. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. <laughs> down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. <sighs> it's really hard to think about this stuff. Like my brain doesn't want to think about exactly what it is. But the idea is that on your downstroke, you just play, kind of play all your strings. On your upstroke, on your first upstroke, you're really only trying to hit the bottom one or maybe two strings. Okay. So down, up, down, and when you're playing that next down, you're kind of just trying to hit the the top two strings. Okay. So down, up, down, down, all the strings. Up, again, the bottom two strings. Down, top two strings. Down, up, all the strings, right? So the idea is you're splitting up the strings. You're basically thinking about it like these two strings, the G, C, and the C string for some of the strokes, and then the E string and the A string for the other strokes, right? So you just think about splitting this whole thing right down the middle, and sometimes you're gonna play all of them, and other times you're only gonna play the bottom two or the top two, depending, right? But again, I'll get a little bit closer. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. Okay. And that's kind of the idea. And honestly, once you start doing it, um, I know I probably haven't done the best job of teaching that, but once you start doing that, it's really gonna make sense. It will start to make sense to your fingers. It'll start to make sense, I promise, all right? And you don't have to do it exactly perfectly on the strings. You don't always have to play just one or two strings. It's okay if you accidentally hit three or only hit one. Like, it doesn't really matter. That's just the point is that you're kind of, you're kind of shortening, you're shortening your strum.
shortening your, your strumming pattern a little bit, right? And just kind of like, you're just kind of tapping some and you're playing the full strokes on others. Hopefully that makes sense. Hey, there's other, there's better tutorials on YouTube. If I'm just absolutely confusing you, look for something else because there's better tutorials on how to play stri stro split stroke technique on a banjo ukulele. All right, so really that's about it, man. I, I really hope that uh, this helped you out a little bit. Um, I love my banjo ukulele. I'm so glad I bought it. Um, so glad I found it on eBay. Again, mine, mine's a 1920s Slingerland banjo ukulele, so it's a hundred years old instrument and it's still rocking today. Um, I've, I, I just remember the first time I heard a banjo ukulele sound, which I believe was when, uh, was in a Queen song, right? Brian May, he, uh, plays banjo ukulele and I heard it and I'm like, I have to have that instrument. Don't know why. So if it's hit you the same way, I hope that you really enjoy playing. Hope this helped you out and I guess happy playing. Good luck.